Thank you very much for the introduction. Thank you for attending today. I'll say that in case we forget because of time. Um, my name is Marvin Hofflin. I am a, both Mario and myself. We work at the uh, Fachhochschule Canton. That's our German lesson for today. It's called the Corinthian University of Applied Sciences. We're located in Austria. And I, I do almost all the uh, Moodle admin and training, and I do uh, a lot of the special course development. I guess we could call it learning design. Uh, Mario, you wanted a few words? Yeah, thank you. My name is Mario Ria. <clears throat> I'm a 50-50 person on, on, our, on, our, on our university. Uh, that means 50% uh, is my profession. I'm, in the, I'm working in the fields of, of computer graphic. And in the time, and in the time, and in the time, <laughs> when I'm not trying to teach how, the, how all the gizmos of 3D game engines are working to my uh, students, I'm responsible uh, for the technical side of our Moodle system. I'm a sysops and a full stack developer. And I'm responsible for maintaining and developing all the stuff uh, that we built up custom to our Moodle system. That brings me to our Moodle system. Um, a few facts. Our Moodle system got its anniversary uh, last year. It is 10 years old. Um, we have our user base is about uh, 60,000 uh, 60, users. It's, I think, uh, uh, one of the uh, tinier Moodle systems around here. Um, our daily user count is about 2,000 users, uh, unique logins, uh, and about 40,000, uh, 60,000, 40,000 uh, sessions per day. Yeah. Whoops. I'll probably be doing that all presentation, so please excuse me. Uh, so the overview, what did we wanted to do? We wanted to, we used to have a student service app that Mario and with another colleague developed, but that was discontinued. We bought a third party tool, but that did not have all of the functionality for students that was available. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about the wants. What did we wanna get out of the Moodle app? Why did we develop that into just not course learning, but also a basic basically a campus service system. We also want to talk about the don't wants, which Mario will take back over from the uh, developer side. Uh, we'll look at, uh, we just have screenshots, but if anyone is interested, we do have a, a small app a video that's on uh, YouTube that shows all the functions in German and in English as well. And then uh, Mario will take back over and he'll tell you how he did it. When we say we, I basically mean him. So, uh, but uh, we do a lot of the testing together and we also discuss what new features we'd like to bring in. So the we is not too bad. So let's continue. So what do we want? Well, we are, we have subscribed. We do have the premium service. We have the campus university custom branding. We also wanted to, one of our ideas, not just with the Moodle app, but also with the LMS, is make a one-stop shop for students. Because we've seen at other universities, Moodle is many times an island solution. You've got your campus information system, you've got your virtual classroom, you've got your OneDrives. We wanted to make sure that we try to integrate this all, and we're also trying to get our lecturers and professors to do this as well. So we also have events, we put in course information. As you can see here, and I'll try to stay close to the microphone, maybe if I use the laser. We've expanded that expandable uh, menu that's on the Moodle app to put in a number of different things. And I'm gonna show you screenshots of all of that, so I'm not going to go through all of the different things, but we, one of the things I use the Moodle app for a lot is I love the public transport system. We've got it set up that I can say I'm from campus one, we need to go to campus five. I can access the local public transport without going to their app. I can do it right from the Moodle app. And I've got default from this point to that point, and bingo, I know what bus, what train I need to take. We, f we are hoping that this is a really useful feature for our students as well. Uh, the things we don't want, so I'll turn it back over. Thank you. You see, we have a plan. It's always good to have a plan before you, before you start developing. Um, what we don't want? We don't want um, to host and to maintain a separate native mobile app. Yeah? Um, because, you know, we are two. 
men uh, who are responsible for, for the whole system and we simply have not the time uh, to do all the stuff that's around to, to uh, maintain and to, to, do, to the whole process um, this, that is necessary to, for example, to provision a mobile app for Apple and for Android. So um, the, next, uh, the next thing what we want is we want only one app um, where the Moodle context is in and our additional context from our campus management system. Um, yes, and as I've pointed out uh, before, uh, update and maintenance should be uh, avoided or limited to the only necessary stuff, uh, what, is, what is needed um, to develop the views and the business code that drives our views that are uh, rendered in the, in the app. So one of the things that we have here, and I apologize on my PowerPoint, it did not look like this with the screenshots, so there's always that difficulty there, is as you can see, we have both uh, Android and iOS. I as a lecturer can use this, not just our students. So I know when my upcoming events are, we have color coordinated it so that I know what is a meeting, I know what is a lecture, which is what we have here. I also know what is an exam, so the students can see when they have exam dates. Again, the, our normal system does this, but it does not have this user interface that makes it easier for the students. What's also nice is a student can see how much time is left in that meeting or in that lecture. Should I sneak in or should I not sneak in, for example. Uh, all of the information comes from the campus information system as a back end, so we're basically just integrating these features in the front end. And if I click on one of my courses, I see, the, and the students see, the entire what is going to happen in this course, what is my lecture going to be about, they see the number of credits, they see my name. They can click here right from their mobile device and they can send me an email. They can also call me on this. And if I click over here on the events, I see and the students see all of the different events that are going to happen this semester. We've even added in a nice tiny little thing that helps my planning of the lecture. This is the Christmas break, so there's 20 days before I'll see the students again. So we've got a lot of little bugs and what we, we don't want to geek out too much, but we do find it pretty cool. <laughs> so for the students, students can check what they, how they did on their exams. So they've got their current exam listings. Also, they can click on that physiotherapy and uh, basically that's in German, as you saw there. They can see what group they're in. They see the exam date. Satisfactory is a three. We use a scale of one, one to three. American system, that'd be a C. And they can also see how well they did compared to their colleagues in that class. And this is all generated, and this is something that they do not have from our campus information system. We've built this in into the Moodle app using data from what we call actions. Um, the grade overview is also quite nice. They can see per semester. If we have bachelor and master students, this goes back as well. What we built in, and this comes up quite often, many students need to see their transcript of records. They need to download it. They need to provide that to someone. Usually it's our funding agency to make sure they get their scholarships. They can do this right from their mobile device. And again, one-stop shop, instead of go to the intranet, click here, click there, they can do this all here. What's also interesting is you can see how many credits they have, and even we've built in a study progress bar where they're at in their three-year bachelor's program. Again, they can basically, if they need certificate of enrollment, again, something necessary for Austrian students or stu students studying in Austria, they need to make sure that they can provide this to certain government agencies. So we also have built that into the Moodle mobile app. Those were the must-haves. These are the nice-to-have stuff that we built into the expandable thing. Here we have the course evaluation. Students can evaluate their course right from the Moodle app. 
five minutes okay i'm just gonna go through this quickly we do have a move uh, a video where you can see this this was the transportation system we also can for both students as well as lectures do we have a free room on campus sometimes students want to meet in a larger lecture room they can check to see if it's empty they can see when the next event is so if they do need a little team planning the library is too full they don't have another place they can check there as well so how we did it now we only got five minutes so see what you can do yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you okay let's see um how, do, how this is how this works uh, with the moodle app this works only with the moodle app because the moodle the moodle mobile app is a special kind of mobile app it's called hybrid cross platform app yeah uh, the difference between this uh, kind of application and the normal native application is that um, in this case the Moodle app is using a framework called Cordova. Cordova is the basic framework if that, that you choose if you want to build hybrid uh, cross-platform uh, applications and its main purpose is uh, it creates a set of tools to build a headless browser application for in this case uh, iOS and Android yeah? and its other purposes um, the headless browser is not um, no. you need more than a headless browser you need a, a interface you need to interface um, GPS and uh, hardware and uh, calendar and such of things and this is this goes to the API of the iOS uh, operation system or the Android operation system the um, Cordova framework does this with the, they call that JS bridges yeah so you can call certain functions via JavaScript uh, in native code iOS or uh, Android. On top of Cordova, if the Cordova app is uh, launched and the browser uh, gets initialized, um, you can load um, JavaScript and HTML. Yeah? Uh, in our case, the mobile app uses um, two frameworks for that. The one is Angular, Angular 2. Um, I might some of you know that uh, Angular and his uh, producer AngularJS is one of the oldest um, single page application frameworks. Yeah? These frameworks then the, the purpose, the main purpose of these frameworks is to alter the document object tree um, and to mimic the behavior of an application like you have on desktop in Windows or something. Yeah? And Ionic is, a, is the companion to Angular. A Ionic's purpose is uh, to mimic the user experience and the UI behavior on, for iOS UI elements and um, Android um, UI elements via HTML and JavaScript and of course uh, CSS. So this is what you have to keep in mind if you are working with the mobile app. The base technologies are only HTML JavaScript and CSS. Yes, you, if the mobile app, if the um, Moodle mobile app is started, and you get your JavaScript code via, for example, the block delegate running in the app. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> then you have complete control over the document over the over the DOM, and you can alter things. You can you can render your own stuff. Click see. So um, what we have done is there's a possibility uh, to make uh, we use blocks for our purpose and uh, one feature is um, you can you can say that a blog is mobile only yeah it's a um, this is made via um, an application interface for the blocks is uh, the function is called is empty and you can check in the is empty function if uh, the call to render and to get the, mo the mobile context uh, mobile context is coming via the web service yeah, or via normal uh, 
we are normal HTTP call. So we filter that out. Only web service is allowed. And you see, <laughs> sorry. You see, this, you see what you see. Basically, kind of how you did with the integration. And if anyone really would like more information, we can show you the app. We also, this presentation is available, and you have our contact information. Thank you so much.